Frankie Gaetan writes in, Hey Baf, will you please make a tutorial on how and when to use the correct anti-air with Sakura? Or how should I set the dummy in training room on how I can improve my anti-air game? I've been meaning to make a video about something related to this, but let me address your question first. I'm going to break this question into three videos. First, this one, Sakura's specific anti-airs at various ranges and why they work. Second, how to test and find your own anti-airs for whatever character you play. And third, a little bit of the deeper meta on baiting anti-airs based on the jump range. Crouch Fierce is your best general anti-air. It can work from pretty close or pretty far away. And unlike every other anti-air Sakura has, it actually shrinks your hurtbox, which is cool. It works from really far out if the opponent hits an air normal. Be aware that if you use it from too far out and they empty jump, you can whiff and look stupid while your opponent kills you. You can't always get point blank after a successful Crouch Fierce, but you do usually have a nice little walk-in mix-up once they land. You can also cancel the Crouch Fierce into a Fireball for a little free chip or a charge release mix-up. But be aware that EX uppercuts and supers can punish this on reaction, especially if you're too obvious with it. You can alternatively cancel into a V-Skill, which does have a lot of surprise value. You've got a nice 50-50 if they try and block their way out. But this is reactable, and most characters can easily just anti-air you back. Light Uppercut is your alternative meterless anti-air. It's not upper body invincible, and it's not too fast, so you usually want to do it nice and early so they land into it. Its effective range is overall farther away than Crouch Fierce's. But there's plenty of overlap. And it knocks down, so you get some better corner push, and maybe even some real Loki Zema. Unlike Crouch Fierce, you can cancel Light Uppercut into Super. This does a smidge more damage than doing Raw Super as an anti-air, and it self-confirms since the Super won't even come out unless the Uppercut works. But Light Uppercut can be really unreliable. If you're too early or too far, you lose between 20 and 40 damage. And if you're too late, you get counter hit, and then probably eat a full jump in combo. Compared to Crouch Fierce, the trades are really awful. Also, because it doesn't have upper body invincibility, certain air normals just really mess with it. It can have problems going under the opponent. If the opponent is jumping from really close, a good reply is a jump back air throw. This does good damage, but the repositioning might not be ideal. You can also do jump back strong into EX air Tatsu. Regular Tatsu is inconsistent here. And neutral jump strong can be inconsistent too. If you want to spend the bar, EX uppercut is Sakura's best anti-air. It's extremely fast at 4 frames, has real invincibility, does good damage, and knocks down. The horizontal range is extremely nice, making it Sakura's most consistent anti-air by far against distant jumps. It's very fast, so it works even if you don't have time to get a Crouch Fierce out, most obviously after a fireball. Because it's invincible, you can do it really late, which removes the close range weakness that Light Uppercut has. Her pushbox gets really tall, so if you do it late enough, she'll rarely go under the jumper. And if it does, the first rep is a hard knockdown, so you're not punishable. You can even autocorrect or crosscut it to punish close jumps, which works more reliably than light uppercut. Apart from slightly less forward movement, VT2 uppercut works exactly like her EX uppercut. except that it's meterless, so you can potentially super cancel it. Raw Super is a surprisingly consistent anti-air. The hitbox is very tall and reliable, it's decently fast, and it's completely invincible. Of course, it's very expensive, but if it's going to kill, it's generally your best anti-air option. 
There are a couple of other anti-airs worth mentioning, but they're really inconsistent or bad. Back Fierce works from further out than Crouch Fierce, but it usually trades even if you time it well. The anti-air frames won't cause a crush counter launch, even if you get the counter hit. Medium and heavy uppercut can snipe neutral jumps, but they can lose the air normals, and even when they work, they're not too strong. Up fireballs can situationally anti-air, but can't easily be done on reaction to a jump. They're more for catching people who are looking to jump over fireballs. Now for some general advice on anti-airing. The most important thing is range. You should constantly be thinking, if the opponent jumped from where they are now, which anti-air would I use? You should be watching for the opponent's jumps literally all the time. Don't stop thinking about this if you're a low-level player. It needs to be your main concern. The sooner you have it become second nature, the sooner you can start worrying about other things. But you have to be able to punish all jumps, or else you won't be able to control the opponent's movement at all, or do jump weak things like fireballs safely. There's a huge difference between the opponent making you block a normal and getting a mix-up on you, or you slapping them for 90 damage and getting a mix-up of your own. If you're not at a good range to anti-air, you should move to a good range to anti-air. If you're too far, move in. If you're too close, move back, or be ready for your close range anti-airs. This depends on where you want to stand based on the matchup, but most new players don't realize you can be proactive about standing in the spots where your anti-airs work. That's most of being ready for it. I'll have another video soon on how to find your character's anti-airs and how to practice doing them, but most of your practice has to unfortunately be in-match against an opponent jumping when they want to. There's no training mode settings to substitute for the real thing here.